See, I had two cases going on because the first case, of course, this Judge Shuang was stalling out. So I filed a second case against just some of the doctors and one of the directors of this uh, uh, Medicaid contractor. And, and then there also these judges were doing the stalling. And there, even though the case and after doing stalling and stalling, Judge Zinnes finally dismissed the case, uh, but it completely contradicted the Fourth Circuit's previous findings uh, in other cases. And still, when I send it for appeal to the Fourth Circuit, the Fourth Circuit, with an opinion written by Judge Wilkinson, backed up uh, Judge Zinnes' dismissal of the case, even though it completely contradicted Judge Wilkinson's own prior findings in other cases. Anyway, um, that second case wasn't really important to me, and since uh, the Fourth Circuit essentially said everything can be handled through the main case, that's okay. But I do want to let you know some of the things that happened in that second case. Um, there was, in the second case, what happened is these people, the MedStar uh, Medicaid contractor, which is kind of like a social service agent, is supposed to like, you know, on the cheap, uh, give good medical care to poor people and, uh, and be mindful of the taxpayers' money. But when I filed that case, they actually moved, they relocated their entire office, and they're supposed to be like in austere settings. But they relocated the entire office to a bigger, better office, just so they would not, you know, when the the court papers arrived, that they would not be there and, you know, the the court service could not be completed. So, so, so just to avoid receiving court papers, they spent two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars to relocate that entire office. Then also, when I uh, one of these papers it was to be served by you know served to one of the doctors in D.C. by the U.S. Marshal's office. Well, this is like a simple task. If you have a if you have court papers to be served by the U.S. Marshals to a doctor's office in D.C., that's the easiest thing to get done. But even that. Um, Judge Schwang got the U.S. Marshal's office to botch that. How hard could that have been done to serve that? But and then also towards the end of the case, um, this uh, MedStar was able to make filings. What these people, um, these doctors, and that um, um, head of this MedStar division, the the. The case was against them. It was not against MedStar, and MedStar would not have any authorization to file any papers in this case unless it came with the judge's uh, approval. So, without doing that, uh, when these defendants were supposed to file a response, um, the response listed these defendants' name, but then it also included MedStar, and MedStar was not part of the case. So what MedStar wanted is, and then of, and then uh, after about two hours, the lawyers they submitted a second one, removing MedStar and saying the earlier one was an error, but the earlier one got to remain in the file. It's not supposed to be in the file. If they made an error, the earlier one is not supposed to remain on the court file. But Judge Zinnes allowed the earlier one, so essentially MedStar in that case also got to have its say in the case. So it looks like, you know, they had their say in, in court and, uh, and they were found to have done nothing wrong. But there again, this is another fraud. Uh, MedStar should, you know, that document which listed 
the five defendants at the heading and then added the six entity metstar uh, was not supposed to be done that way it should only have the five people and so that's the kind of thing that uh, judge Zenas did and and, and that uh, and judge Schwang did and but anyway that case wasn't important so when we move to the uh, main case uh, what judge Zenas did actually is Okay, and I guess back on this case, when she dismissed the case, she said, well, this is not a federal case. This has to be done in state court. And, but, in so even though she was entirely wrong on that, okay, let's get beyond that. But um, if, she, if the whole thing is supposed to be done in state court, she was not supposed to be discussing the facts of the case. And, she, but she took the opportunity to misstate all the facts about the case. So she wrote things like, and and this sounds just like the Stanford case, but in the Stanford case, where it was said that the victim begged the probation office to give the perp no jail time. Well, in this time, uh, Judge Zinna says, now, even though I call the crime and all these things, I, I call it, deliverance on the Potomac and I describe all these things in great detail and yet Judge Zinna says that the whole thing was accidental. Ah, but just like the probation office, uh, they don't want to, Judge Zinna doesn't say that she says it's accidental. She says that I say it's accidental. So she's actually saying that I am saying that this whole crime was accidental. And then she starts to change all the facts. And then not only really she says it was accidental, she says it was it, it was accidental and done by the MRI technician Papel alone. And I and I made it very clear that although initially that was my my thought. You know, once the evidence came, the evidence was very clear that this could not have been done by the MRI tech papel, and this took the work of a brain surgeon. So she completely changed the facts. And then one of the things she even wrote is she wants to uh, make it look like I'm lying. So what she says is uh, at the beginning of the case, I said that that it was the MRI contrasting agent which was sent into my brain and now I'm saying it is water but this is so absurd how would the victim of a crime who is sealed inside an MRI machine and it's by a miracle that he actually lived to come out on the other side after this whole thing you know how would he know that that uh, it was actually fortunate for me to even find out that any crime was done and something was sent into my head, let alone for me trying to know what the item, you know, what the material was which was sent into my brain. But even though it is so absurd, they write it out this way because you know why? When somebody else takes a, qu a quick glance at it, uh, it does it it does you know it 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 gets to the intention of what she wanted so she was using it as a way to show that uh, to say that i'm a liar but it was so and unless you know the details of the case you don't understand that it's so absurd to try to um, say that uh I was saying a lie because i did not know at first what the material was which was sent into my brain so she completely changes all the facts then to to get herself and judge Schwang off the hook she also says again again saying that I say she says that I say that all the injuries came on hard and fast at the beginning but that's absolutely not true and I have always said at the beginning the injuries came on as a as a small trickle and it's really after all this additional misconduct and it's really after uh, Judge Schwang got into the conspiracy. See, Judge Schwang got into the conspiracy and that, and the incredible thing is um, when I was filing the court papers, see, because 
It's the type of brain injury when I was filing the court papers. It was that kind of activity which was greatly exacerbating the injury. So, so, you know, I could go mow the lawn and that wouldn't harm the condition that much. But I could sit down and type and then with, with my uh, eyes being used and with me not getting uh, sleep because I was needing a lot of sleep and by having to use my brain, you know, because it's a really bad brain injury. So really what bothered, what made the condition worse was that kind of activity. So so really it was the activities of of struggling with Judge Schwang and Zinnis what exacerbated the condition. And so by saying that the condition got really bad at the beginning, what Zinnis wants to do is, see at the beginning, obviously the beginning would have been February of of, of 2013 and I only got to Schwang about two years later so by saying it happened all the you know all the bad injuries came at the beginning and nothing came after that that's that's wanting to get Schwang and Zinnis off the hook because they themselves did the injuries to me because they they because Schwang took took the responsibility to help me get my condition treated and instead what he was doing is making my injuries worse and worse